So your reports in the back. Okay, that's, um, let me know if so, you want to bring up the report because I have to share it through the Zoom. Yep. Um, what I was thinking that the report up would be good if they use it for um, Barbara, I guess, but you first just control it and I'll speak to it here and then just have you. And uh, declare um, District Plan Committee 22 Bar 4 open and welcome members and staff to the meeting. This meeting is, I remind you, being live streamed under COVID-19 Framework Orange requirements and there may well be members of the public joined us by Zoom. Do we have any apologies? Sir, do you want to put on a light one for Anne? Oh, okay, we'll make a late apology for Councillor Henry. We need a mover on a second, is that? Yeah. That's um, okay. Councillor Gray and Murray Benge. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Um, are there any declarations of interest? No. Yes. Yes. Uh, so firstly, could I ask if we could change the order of business and deal with item 7.2 first before we go to 7.1? We have a mover, Councillor Granger, Councillor Denyer, all in favour? Against? Carry. Okay, Mr Martelli. <coughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, councillors. Um, the the report is is fairly straightforward. I think in terms of what you've got there is recommendation. We have the private plan change hearings coming up next week, and um, <clears throat> what we have um, requested and spoken with you, Mr. Chairman, about is just having some extra planning expertise to, to assist the committee because there will be some tricky planning issues there. And I think it'd be useful to have that expertise on your panel rather than solely relying on council staff and recommendations. So it gives you some independence around that because there are likely to be some planning issues coming up. So it will help with the independence. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, just check in. You said 7.2, but is it 6.2? Did I say 7.2? It says 7.2 on my run sheet. It says 6.2 in the agenda. Sorry. So it must be 6.2. We had 6 as the duration of interest on, on our run. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's the issue in regard to the appointment of Independent Hearing Commissioner, Mr. Weddy. So thank you for that clarification. I have a mover on a second at all? Oh, sorry. Um, I'll just Alderman. confirm, are you chairing it or is Alan going to be chairing it? I will be chairing the panel. Thank you. And he and Mr. Withy will not be a member of the panel, but an advisor to the panel. That's correct, is it not? Uh, no, he'll be a member of the panel. He so will be a member of the panel. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Questions. Yep. Yep. Okay. Was this, not, was this not important enough to have um, all the members of the scheme uh, of the committee involved, Mr. Chairman? Um, it's very important, but I don't think that was the issue. And um, I had some discussions with staff members, and it was as chairman, and it was um, generating considerable angst in the community, and we wanted to take care to ensure that there were no members that could be perceived to have a conflict in regard to the to the matters concerned. Not that they had a conflict, but they were could potentially be perceived to have. And so that's why I made the selections I did in terms of 
make it. So you um, took out Kaimai Ward Council as, as a result? Well, not entirely because I've asked Councillor Granger to be part of that, but I figured... Well, he does live in a Makara and I'm don't I know he was overseas and I wasn't able to converse directly with him, but I don't believe um, that his interests in the Tapuna district were sufficient to have triggered that point. I don't know if you wish to comment, Mr. Councillor Granger. Uh, not particularly. I mean, I, I have been to some of the Heartlands meetings. Um, over, over the term I've been on here. Um, and so I'm aware of the Puna issues, but I'm not as intimately involved with them as I am obviously with the Mokara. Yeah, and that's exactly the point that, and the point that I came from in making that decision in terms of who to be on the panel. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and just to add to what you said, Mr. Chair, it's um, I, um, I think there is a difference between so in this in this capacity you're sitting as a quasi judicial body rather than as a committee of the whole, particularly for particularly for plan change processes or resource consent hearings, um, and it's unusual to, it would be unusual to have a a hearing panel um, that is is constituted of eight. Um, commissioners. Mm. Yeah, that's correct. I would have considered it unnecessarily unwieldy to have the whole the whole group. But yeah, as I've talked with some of you, there were considerations given to how we could involve more. But that's the point we've come up with. So I think we've given that a good thrashing, and it was moved and seconded. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so Dania Granger, um, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Okay, so then we'll move back to the other issue, 6.1 or 7.1, depending on how you um, <laughs> look at it. Okay. Yes. Yes, on page, page six, six of the agenda. Yeah. So, Alison, is this to you? It is. Um, thank you, councillors. Um, I have got um, Mr. Chris Watt, who is uh, zooming in, who is um, the author of this paper. And uh, this committee, I don't believe, has uh, been introduced to Roger Foxley. Roger Foxley is one of our senior consents planners, and he is the author of the uh, paper that was coming before us today. So. Um, Chris, I'll open to you for doing an uh, introduction. Thank you, Alison. Uh, good morning, councillors. Uh, apologies, I can't be there, but uh, fallen to being a household contact due to my daughter testing positive yesterday. So uh, isolating from the isolator. Um, just to background the, the report, uh, obviously, Mr Fox has produced a comprehensive and robust assessment against the statutory uh, provisions of Section 125 of the Resource Management Act. And in reaching a decline recommendation, uh, as outlined in my uh, covering report, uh, staff don't have the uh, delegation to consider and approve a decline. Uh, that lies with the District Plan Committee. Um, as stated, uh, there were no submitters. It was not a notified application, so there are no other parties uh, to the hearing. You are determining the application or the, the recommendation as if it had come to me for a decision um, from, from the planner. The recommendation is to decline. Uh, the applicant, as far as I'm aware, and Mr Foxley, excuse me, can uh, confirm this, is aware of the recommendation. Uh, they did not indicate they wish to appear before the committee, and therefore it is a matter of the committee just determining uh, what they're presented with and uh, making a recommendation on the uh, staff report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Granger. Yeah, thanks. Um, so my question is, did they ask for the extension uh, and they have not shown any desire to follow it up or is it just something that rolled over? They, they've asked for an extension of timeframes to the lapse date by three years 
And uh, so that was what the application was for under 125 of the RMA. I can confirm that Mr. Watt is correct. I did um, advise the applicant's agent uh, that in writing that the recommendation is to decline and they did not state they wish to be heard at the hearing. Councillor Denia. Um, yeah, my, my question was that I have a concern that we are penalising the current owners for the actions of previous owners and not making much progress prior to 2020. Um, and although the, the current owners appear to be making some progress, albeit probably delayed by, by COVID. Um, so are we suggesting that the current owners should have sought and received legal advice that the resource consent needed to be implemented in, in full, otherwise it was unlikely to be extended on this occasion? So just so I'm clear on what your question is, with regard to the current owners, you're concerned that they're being penalised by what Z Energy have done with regard to when the consent was granted and the timeframes that Z had a, an, a granted consent and then did nothing and then on sold it to Palm Orchards and now Palm Orchards are looking for an extension of timeframe. So I do consider that in my report and the fact that, yes, you're correct, they have quite what I would consider to be late in the piece. Um, look to give to move the application forward or to move forward with giving effect to the application or the consent. Uh, however, there is still a period of some months where they didn't um, investigate and look to move forward, uh, giving effect to that consent from the date they purchased the property. My, my impression was that there was nothing they could have done short of full implementation of the resource consent that would now cause you no, to recommend no. it. So now. they... They could have done a lot to give effect to it, from um, undertaking earthworks to removing the dwelling on the site to... Uh, uh, so I'm not sure if you've seen, you probably have, are aware that uh, uh, three, maybe more, regional council consents that are required to give effect to the petrol station to store um, petroleum on site have lapsed. They have not sought to obtain those regional council consents. Uh, so that, that formed my, my decision and where I landed on this. Thank you. Okay. Just, just to add to uh, Mr Foxley's response, um, we have been engaged with um, Pum Orchard's legal representation and uh, they didn't seek to appear before this committee. So. Councillor Murray Bench. I do hope uh, Chris has got heating in his garage, but mm. uh, um, my question is, what appeal rights do does this applicant have if we turn it down? I don't need any appeal rights. Um, I actually can't give you a concise answer to what appeal rights they have should we uh, decline this extension of time frame. So it has now lapsed. Um, with regard to appealing an extension of time frames decline under the RMA, um, would like to actually defer this to uh, Rachel. Is a... He's just hurriedly looking at the legislation. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I can assist um, the committee. Section 5 of my introduction report uh, states, should the committee decline the application and the subsequent issuing of that decision by staff, the applicant has the right to lodge an objection under Section 357A to the council's decision. So Roger's right that the primary application will have lapsed uh, but they can uh, submit an objection to this decision. Now, the issue is then that the objection uh, in terms of process would likely find its way back before the district plan committee also. Happy to move the recommendation, sir. Thank you, Councillor murray Bench. Do we have a seconder? I'm happy to second it then. No one wishes to speak to it. I'll put the motion, recommendations one, two, and three. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. And so 